My name's Katya Lezen, and here's my story. I always had two phobias growing up. One was a pathological fear of sharks, and my other phobia from the time I was a little girl was one of cancer. And uh, just before Mother's Day in 2011, I came face to face with one of those two phobias. I was not stranded in shark infested waters, the other one. Um, I got a call from my doctor, one that, you know, um, many people have experienced that began with the words, I don't know how to tell you this. One of the things I just want to share with any of you who are kind of at that stage where you've just received that call the way I did is to let you know that, you know, the anticipation of that call, my fear of cancer ended up being far worse than the reality of it. That actually facing my fear was what allowed me to conquer it. So the first time that I meet with my gynecological oncologist, I'm sitting waiting for him in the exam room and he walks in and before he's even said hello or shaken my hand or introduced himself, he says, are you Jewish? Like those were literally the words as he walked in the room. And you know, I'm wondering, are you not gonna treat me? Like, I didn't know what to do with that question because I didn't know that what he was really trying to ascertain is, are you of Ashkenazi Eastern European Jewish lineage? Cause we think it's highly likely that your cancer stems from this genetic mutation. Since you're 45 years old, which for cancer, an ovarian cancer is quite young, so that's a warning sign right there, and there's no history of ovarian cancer in your family. I didn't know any of this. I really don't think I'd even heard of genetic mutations at the time. Angelina Jolie had not yet made the national scene. And I'm just thinking like, you know, uh, do I explain that I'm kind of trying to raise my kids Jewish, but I'm not Jewish? He didn't want to know any of that. He just wanted to know what's your lineage because we think you need genetic testing because we think your cancer stems from this genetic mutation. And I've come to really appreciate that it wasn't left up to me. I wasn't sent off with a brochure and told to come back if I kind of could get my head around the fact that I should get tested. It was just presented to me as part and parcel of my care. We need your weight, we need your blood pressure, and you need to come get tested. And so I did, and I found out that I was positive for the BRCA1 gene. Now, I'm going to be honest, at the time, this just felt like the hits just kept on coming. Like, how unlucky can I be that I not only have cancer, but I also have this horrible genetic mutation? I have truly changed my tune and come full circle and I'm absolutely convinced that within the realm of bad luck of having cancer, the fact that mine stemmed from this genetic mutation was a total stroke of good luck. I also truly, truly see it as a gift that I'm giving my kids. Um, I obviously hope that they don't have the mutation and that they don't get cancer. But in a way, I feel like they're actually kind of better prepared than the general population to be able to know what's going to befall them and do something about it. When they are tested, they will be tested by Myriad. I know that there are other companies out there testing now. Some of them are cheaper, some of them are faster. None of them are better or frankly even close. And to me, if you're gonna test, you want reliable results um, and you want results that are backed by decades of research, um, lots of PhDs on staff and you know a state-of-the-art laboratory. So um, having now seen the facility that tested me, which was Myriad, that's what I want for my kids because I'm a mom and I want the very best for my kids. Um, the very best also includes um, giving them all the information they need to make life decisions. So they certainly will be tested. It's just that those life decisions aren't really on the forefront right now. So when it comes time to start thinking about starting a family, my girls at, at least will want to know whether they carry the gene because it will affect how soon they start a family, whether they need certain prophylactic surgeries after they start a family, etc. I, in the last five years, have undergone seven surgeries, 10 hospitalizations, the removal of multiple body parts, more procedures than I could possibly recount right now. What mom would not want to spare her children that hell? And I have the means of giving them the information that will allow them to make life decisions and medical decisions that will preclude them from having to go through the hell that I went through. That to me is nothing but a gift. Finally, I will say that the other way that the mutation played out in my life is that my cancer did come back. I found out that um, I had a recurrence of ovarian cancer and that I was probably going to need a very specialized drug that is required for uh, recurrences of ovarian cancer called a PARP inhibitor. And at the time, even though this was only a few years ago, it was not FDA approved. So I was going to have to go through the emotional and financial and logistical upheaval of going away from home to participate in a clinical trial. 
Luckily, surgical intervention took care of all visible signs of the disease and I did not need to take that drug. But if my cancer were to come back today, that drug is now FDA approved and that is solely thanks to the genetic test that is the diagnostic tool that partners with that um, to make it FDA approved and that is the BRCA test. So I again feel like this genetic mutation has played such a positive role and allows me to put my cancer on the back burner and live my life. And that's really the greatest gift of all is that cancer is not ruling me. I am ruling cancer and I'm living my life and I'm loving my life.